So I'm cooking my chuck roast in the slow cooker. And these are the spices I'm using, paprika, oregano, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder is an optional, ground cumin, salt, black pepper, olive oil, The fourth lesson I have learned over the last six years is that the rules, these carnivore rules, they don't matter. I get messages constantly saying, can I have avocado? Can I have sauerkraut? Can I have cottage cheese? Like whether something is carnivore or not, it doesn't really matter. If you can have something, the two questions you should be asking yourself are, does this food negatively affect me? And does this food help me meet my goals? There are carnivore foods that might not help you hit your goals. I know so many people that can overeat on the brown butter bites, that eat a whole loaf of a carnivore bread. I could eat a whole brick of cheese in one sitting. Those foods might be considered carnivore, but they're not gonna help me hit my goals because I can overeat them. There are also foods that are technically not carnivore. I eat spices on a regular basis. I know people who incorporate avocados or some fermented foods regularly. Correct, those are not technically carnivore, but are those foods negatively affecting you? And are those foods helping you hit your goals? If you can answer both of those questions with confidence, then great have that food. This lifestyle is not about following a specific perfect set of rules. It is about finding a lifestyle that you can sustain long term that is going to make you as healthy as possible. And yes, I do think understanding the definition of a carnivore diet is very helpful, especially if you are doing this as an elimination diet to heal an autoimmune condition. It's important to go down to that baseline carnivore in order to truly understand what foods are negatively affecting you. And I would highly recommend that you check out Judy Cho's new book, The Complete Carnivore Diet for Beginners. It's really gonna help you take this as an elimination diet and then how and when you can incorporate foods back in. There's some recipes that I contribute at the end of the book that might be helpful for you as well if you're getting started. So understanding that is important, but long-term, can I eat blank? I don't know. Does this food negatively affect you? And is this food helping you hit your goals? And don't worry so much about like if it's carnivore or not. And that kind of segues into the fifth lesson that I have learned over the last six years. And that's just don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. Sometimes, especially online, we see people obsessing about where they're getting their meat from, the sourcing, the is it carnivore, the way that they're doing carnivore, the ratios of things. Like, None of that stuff matters long term. What really matters the most is can you stick to this in order to be consistent? Consistency always is gonna matter over perfection. And so while maybe some people do better on different macros, what matters the most is that you're sticking to this long term so that you can heal or lose weight or reach whatever health goals that you have. You need to eat the meat that you can afford, you need to eat the meat you enjoy, and you need to have patience. I have gotten caught up in some of the more aggressive ways of doing carnivore and typically it led to me falling off and gaining some weight back because it wasn't sustainable. So 
slow and steady when it comes to weight loss on carnivore is something that's gonna be more sustainable for you long-term. We gotta find a way to get off the roller coaster. And the same goes if you eat something that you regret or something that doesn't help you hit your goals, start over the next day. It one day is not gonna throw you off, but letting yourself spiral out of shame and turn that into a three month issue where you gain back 20 pounds, like. I have done that so many times in my life and realizing that I just have to figure out how to be consistent is the most important thing. I completely agree with what she said. I shredded the beef, caramelized some onion, and it tasted so good. You can also make your own burrito using your low-carb tortilla. Thanks guys for watching.